Hello, Happy New Year and all that. 2022, guys. Although this uh, video is from autumn 21 because I've, I've just been, I've got loads of stuff going on at the moment which I can't wait to share with you later on in the year. And um, yeah, so today's video is going to be after I got stuck on the river. The fire brigade had to actually come and get me out. And I managed to the next morning. Um, well, here we go. We're seeing the naughty lass going upstream, so against the flow a little bit, and uh, around on the, um, on the outside bend. As you can see, there's a beach there, and it, yeah, that really beached me anyway. And this is Beale Lock on towards Nottingley. Nottingley, I didn't film much from this town, although it is a great stop. The steam packet, still pub of the week. But this video is more about my boat safety scheme examination and uh, see if I passed because I've got an old boat. 1981, this was built. Uh, a lot of things can deteriorate and go wrong. But I've been keeping up on my maintenance in general, so hopefully that will see me through. Let's see what happens. BSS today, boat safety scheme examination. A chap on board called Reese is having a look at ventilation, about um, my oven and all the gas and electrics, just to make sure it's not going to just suddenly blow up, <laughs> injuring myself and, and any anyone else who's near the boat. That's the whole point of it. But while he's doing that, I've got some spring cleaning, even though it's it's autumn. I mean, literally the leaves are falling as I, uh, <laughs> as I say this. But where I'm moored here, it's quite a nice little space just to get everything out and uh, have a look at what I need and what I don't need. Last time I failed my BSS because of this bubble tester and some other, a few other things, but this is the one I'm worried about. I hope, I hope it's all right and I'm actually going to get through. Looks fine. No, I don't even know how the bubble tester works. So it diverts the gas through the little window of fluid. You press and hold the button down for two minutes uh, and you shouldn't see any bubbles in that time. If there's bubbles, you know you've got a gas leak. Right, so sh you shouldn't see any bubbles in no. the bubble tester. That's no, the, that's, that's the, the idea. Right, I get it now, I get it. <laughs> what do you think, Reese? We're all good. Good for another four years. Hey. Hey. <laughs> how, how do you actually, how do people book you? Uh, basically, if you go online, to the uh, boat safety scheme website and there's a little section called find an examiner okay and you go on there it's all done in areas so you go to your location and you type in find an examiner it brings up the list of names uh, and you can see who's closest to you and you can ring up a few ask what their price is you know see if they seem nice or not what's the most common thing that people seem to fail on um, batteries aren't secure, uh, the battery terminals uh, aren't covered, so you could drop a spanner on the top of them and short circuit the, uh, the batteries. Uh, another thing is ventilation. It's not a fail, but a lot of boats don't have enough ventilation for their uh, for the appliances they've got on board as well, so, so that's something to watch out for. Um, and it's surprising how many boats do have a little gas leak, you know, when I come to test it. 
Uh, one that you're not even aware of? Yes, it's, oh dear, yes, right. that's it. It's quite often, you know, it's been like that for uh, a year or two, perhaps, oh, you know, so you just, so it's good to, to check it and make sure everything's okay. You know, it's really important. Right, well, thanks so much, Reese, for coming, to travelling out here to... You're welcome. ...to see yeah, the boat and... You're, uh, you're welcome and, uh, yes, yeah, see you in four years, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> four years, oh, yeah. that's great. Sounds like a long time, it but does. it soon comes round. <laughs> Right. Now I've got to pay you, have I? Yeah, oh, unfortunately. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reese has just gone, and I'm really happy that he has passed my boat. So everything is is in order. There's there is one item that he said that I need to probably attend to, but I've forgotten about that now. <laughs> no, it was to do with my um, stove. So there's a, around the collar of the stove, um, I need to replace what's usually known as the fire cement. Uh, it's actually just um, some heat mate sealant and I bought the wrong sealant. There's two different types basically. I needed to get the higher temperature um, one. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll nip out and get one of those and reseal it. Apart from that, everything's good for another four years. So I'm well happy. Now, I've just got to sort out all this crap. Right, things are looking good. I found some brass plaques that I thought I'd lost. Including one that says Ripon Canal and one that says a Tarda Big Flight. And then um, I've got a few things that maybe might might be worth something. Perhaps I can eBay these. Uh, some things I'm just gonna take to the charity shop. The things I'm definitely gonna have to keep because it's like things like my the magnet and uh, ear defenders and spare rope and I've got this which I've put together I'm quite proud of this <laughs> but also I've discovered people send me stuff sometimes to try out um, I don't like to really feature products on my channel but I'll, I'll tell you about this one because this I think it might be quite a good idea I'm going to try it marine 16 diesel fuel complete I don't really know anything about this but I've been sent it and apparently you can just add this 1,000 mil litre is sufficient to treat 1,000 litres of fuel. My tank is full at the moment, so I know there's about 225 litres. I'll use a quarter of this. That should do it. And then... I'll not have to worry about diesel bug. Combats all of the effects of using biodiesel and ultra low sulfur diesel. Gives lubricity, cleaner, easier starting, reduces emissions, improves fuel consumption, reduces fuel line and injector deposits to zero. I don't particularly understand all of those things, but um, it can't hurt, can it? putting a bit much but it does say um overdosing won't harm won't harm anything so job done i guess that's all i have to do is just pour in a bit of liquid i think it helps if you pour it in at the bottom of the tank before you fill up but i just keep mine topped up anyway because yeah condensation within the fuel tank doesn't sound good to me anyway that doesn't sound like something i want that's one of the causes of diesel bug apparently but I really don't know enough about it. To me, it's just one of those things that gets said and I don't know if I've got any proof that diesel bug is a thing. But if there is more biodiesel about on the system, then maybe it's something I should be worried about. Anyway, I'm not worried about it now because I've just put that stuff in it. So a thank you to Marine16 for sending me this and the cleaning stuff that I've now got to use because I'm talking about it.
just about to set off again. It's a new day. Uh, I've, got, I've got a new look because I've just been to the barbers um, just down the road, um, which I can definitely recommend. They're really, really good. And as you can see, <laughs> what a close shave. <laughs> Turkish barbers, they don't mess around, you know. I've also been to the local, yeah, sort of sandwich shop. Got um, coffee and a bacon and egg panini. Um, panini just because I'm partial really because they don't normally serve it like that <laughs> but they're very accommodating I can recommend that I haven't actually tried it yet but I can recommend the service it was very friendly going back to the boat safety scheme it is partly set up so that pollution incidents are much less common and I'm not talking about rubbish like this that I'm just fishing out just so it doesn't wrap around my propeller I'm on about oil and diesel any kind of fuel leaking into the watercourse I'm just about to set off, but I've noticed some pollution that I've I've reported before, because this is what you can do. If you see diesel or petrol or whatever leaking into the canal, which I can see happening right now, you can ring up the Environment Agency and report it. And I've done that, and hopefully I won't see that happening again. But as I'm about to move off, I'm not going to know. So if you're a boat and you're passing, let me know if, if you're still seeing a discoloration in the water.
before we head into pub of the week, Castleford, uh, I just need to thank a few people. Here they are. Being indicted, uh, inducted to the Crank It crew this week, Greg and Sylvia Bomer, Ed De Quincey, Charles Paul, Sheila Moore, Chris Watkins, Steve Mitchell Moore, Tim Knight, and let's not forget, producer, Craig Goodship. Thank you, everyone. Ahem, <clears throat> uh, yeah, thank you so much. Let's hit the pub. Welcome to the Griffin Inn in Castleford. This is on Lock Lane, in it. that's right by where all the boats are moored. And these are your hosts, Kevin and Wendy, and this is their lovely pub. And it's in here that I got a glimpse of what I might be like in 20 years' time, sat in a pub, holding court with three lovely ladies, probably boring them about canal history. Um, and then later on, as Kev points out, sitting in Grumpy Git's beer garden, just one of several classic pub novelty signs that um, Kev's got here. You've got the man cave, a um, little fire outside as well, a pot-bellied fire, would you call it? And a lovely little garden. I didn't expect to see that. If you look on the Griffin's Facebook page, you'll see that there's loads of music events going on and quizzes and all sorts. But if you look around the place, it's more of a sports pub, really, because of all the uh, links to Leeds United Football Club or Castleford Tigers, which are the main team in the area. And all of the games are televised on Sky Sports. And there's also a dartboard there, too. Looking at the beers, I actually wasn't drinking because I had to drive that day. So I just had a Coke. But talking to the landlord, he had some interesting things to say about running a pub, drinking, and also car insurance. Have a listen to this. Well, my wife um, fetched up in a, in a pub. Mm. Uh, Mum used to have a, have a pub and that, so... But we don't think it, it's right to, for customers to see us drink behind bar. Fair enough. Working. And uh, you know, we'd never have done, and we would never run do. Your insurance might be, say, 150 quid. It's definitely not that. <laughs> it's a lot more than that. <laughs> my, yeah. my insurance, for mm. me, because I'm a landlord, mm. and uh, it's its own pub, could be 450 pound. Wow. Because I'm more liable to drink, mm. because I'm here behind bad and that, than what you are. Wow. A customer is. That is that's a sobering thought, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought that. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Well, seems like I learn something every day. I'm going to leave you with this song here by Fairground Attraction because the video, which I glimpsed in the pub, featured a band on a canal. And this canal is actually the Regent's Canal, but completely unrecognisable to what it is today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it and yeah, there'll be many more to come. I'm doing a lot more on the canals these days, so you should see a lot more content from me. Uh, if I can pull my socks up and get my finger out, loads of stuff to look forward to. I'm turning 40 this year, so I'm gonna have to have a little, little bash at some point. Looking forward optimistically and I hope it's a fantastic year for you too. Cheers for watching, bye-bye and keep on cranking. Never stop.